Welcome to the dev channel, Max Codes. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build out an SCSS nav bar, obviously with SCSS and HTML. Okay, so go ahead and open up your preferred browser and go to codepen.io and hit create. Pen, and then we're gonna be given HTML, CSS, and JS. Pull JS to the side, and let's go ahead and click on this gear icon on CSS and select CSS preprocessor as CSS, save and close. Okay, so go ahead and pause it if you didn't get that and get to that point, and we're ready to write our SCSS code in CodePen. While you're doing that, I'll just say that I'm gonna make a video on how to set up a local SCSS dev environment, and just leave a comment down below if that's something you wanna see. I'll create a video on it if enough people want it, and uh, then I'll put that in the description and let you all know about that when it's ready. Okay, so once you have CSS set to SCSS and you have our HTML right there, let's go ahead and give ourselves a body in our HTML. And then let's just give it a div. And let's say this div has a class of navbar. And then let's write another div. And let's give this a class of body, okay? Or let's say content, because body's already the main tag. Okay, so in navbar, let's just say, uh, let's just put some text, right? And then let's go to content and let's just put in like, let's just put in some text, right? All right, so you can see we have two different sections, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get rid of the content there and I'm just gonna say content goes here, page content goes here, okay? And we're not gonna worry about the content, we're focusing on the nav bar. I just want you to let you know that we're gonna be building an avbar specifically so we can have content on the page, and this is how I would go about it and how I do go about it in my websites, okay? Okay, so in navbar, let's go ahead and create a, another div. Well, let's create a UL, an unordered list. Let's close it off. And in this unordered list, let's go ahead and throw in a couple list items. And in this list item, I'm gonna have an A tag. And this a tag will contain an href to https colon slash slash, and let's just say instagram.com slash maxcodes.io. I have two accounts on Instagram, .io and just maxcodes. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is type inside this a tag. I'll zoom it out a bit. Let me know if that's too small and I'll, I'll keep it at like a different size in my future videos. And the a tag, we'll just say maxcodes. Okay, copy that and let's just put a couple links to different places. These would ideally go to your website in different places, but I'm just using external links because we don't have really um, any other pages in this app yet and we won't in this video. So next one I'll do is I'll say unsplash.com slash max codes. Uh, I think it's an at max codes for unsplash. And then this last one I'm gonna do facebook.com and I think it's real max codes right now because someone has max codes. Okay, and I'll just say Facebook here and then I'll say unsplash and then I'll say Instagram. Okay, so let's go ahead and just test these links. Put these links in, these very links and then hit Facebook and you'll see it says it refused to connect. Now, the reason it's doing that is probably because it, it's not gonna let us on unsplash but what we can do is let's just reload our page and then let's just say target on this is equal to underscore blank. I think that will let us open it in a new tab. I haven't tried it in Unsplash. Okay, yeah, so that worked. Okay, so let me just show you how that can be done one more time. I'll pull this to the right. What you're gonna wanna do is say target is equal to underscore blank on your A tag. Okay, so go ahead and add that to each one of these A, a tags and then just make sure these links are, are working and give me a follow if you wanna see more content on these platforms. I talk a lot about my personal life on, on maxcodes.io, documenting my life here, even my running, trying to get better at running. And uh, basically I'll show you like what I'm doing with my courses. Like I'm building a course right now and I literally just made this story today on what it's about, it's SCSS. Go ahead and check it out if you want. Anyway, that's off topic, but yeah, I, I am trying to build my following on those platforms, so follow me if you want. I have content here, and I have a ton of free picks on Unsplash if you wanna use them for whatever you want. 
post them on Instagram and tag me if you want. You can post these whatever you want. Just make sure you tag me. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this page. And this is our code so far, okay? So go ahead and get that in there. And then now let's just kind of create our grid for our CSS here and just make it look nice, okay? Okay, so let's say in our CSS we have body and then we have nav bar and then we have content, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to go over to your body and then since we're using SCSS, we can straight up put our tags in here too. Okay, now the reason I would do this and still have these is because I would wanna put the, all the nav bar grids and content grids in their own tags. Okay, but the reason I would nest these in body is when I'm trying to align them on the body grid, okay? So if that doesn't make any sense, just keep watching my SCSS videos and courses on Udemy and you will come to realize exactly how I do things and you'll love it. Okay, so in body, let's just say display is grid and then we'll say grid template columns is 1FR and grid template rows is 1FR, okay? Well, for rows, what we'll do is we'll say 50 pixels and then 1FR. What this is gonna do is it's gonna put our nav bar on the 50 pixels and our content on the 1FR. Now, the reason it's looking like this is because our body doesn't have a height. So really, everything is only 50 pixels and that's why our content's overlapping on that. And that probably doesn't make any sense to you right now. But if we just give our content and nav bar a background color, you'll be able to see a little bit better what I'm trying to say. Okay, let's say background and let's say cyan for the nav bar. And for the content, we'll say background and we'll say, uh, let's say gray. Okay, it's only the height of the text. If we remove this text, we wouldn't even see the gray. Okay, and then our list is going over our 50 pixels in our HTML, so that's not working. So let's first fix our height and then we'll fix our little list. Okay, so what I wanna do in body here is I want to go over to the top here and let's just say that the body has a height of 100 view height and it has a width of 100 view width. You don't really need to set the width because it appears to already be working, but there you go. Next thing I wanna do is get rid of those margins where you see the purple or the, why did I say purple, the, the white? Say margin and padding are zero and that'll do that. Okay, next thing we need to fix is we need to put our, I wanna make this light gray. I really don't like that dark gray right now. And then let's make this crimson. Okay, next thing we need to fix, mm, that's that's awful, that's awful. Let's say ghost white, that's a sick color, okay. It's a sick name. Okay, next thing we need to do is we need to make this list work. Okay, so let's go down to nav bar and you can see if we were to use our unordered list in this nav bar here, it would kind of get really messy with all these nestings. Okay, now that's not to say nesting is bad. I actually really love SCSS because of the nesting abilities. That's the main thing I like it for. But we wanna separate them at least into separate little chunks, right? So let's go down to nav bar here and let's say UL and that's inside the navbar. So kind of see what I'm doing here, right? Div navbar contains UL, which means UL can contain LI and then LI can contain a tag. Okay, so very simple. I like to structure my HTML and my SCSS exactly the same. It makes sense that you would do this since the HTML is structured the way it is. So it makes a lot more sense when we have the UL inside the navbar instead of the UL outside of the navbar. Let me know if you agree. I, I really think that that's the truth. I'm just being honest there. Okay, so let's say UL. And let's say that our UL has, let's use flex box. Let's say display is flex box. I think it's just flex. I haven't used flex box in so long. Yeah, it's just flex. And then let's say that, uh, let's get rid of those bullets. Let's say list style type is none. That'll get rid of those bullets. And then let's say margin is zero and padding is zero. Okay, so now we can kind of fix it up. Let's get rid of, let's take our margin here and let's actually overwrite it instead of setting it to zero. So I'll actually get rid of that. And let's overwrite it right here. Let's say margin is zero picks for the top and bottom and then 10, 20 picks on the left and right. Okay, so that's doing it for the entire list. So what I meant to do is we can leave this all zero but then inside of the L list tag inside of the UL, we wanna set the margin of each one of those to zero and 20 picks. That way we'll have space in between each of these, okay? Now let's go, let's switch gears a bit and change this to a grid because I wanna show you how to center it with CSS grid. So let's change this display on the UL to grid 
Let's save it and you'll see that we have a problem here. But we can easily fix this by doing what we did in the body. We can just give it a grid template columns of 1FR and then do the rows automatically. Well, a rows of 1FR and then the columns automatically. Because we want to have a lot of columns over, right? I'll show you what I mean, okay? Let's say in here in UL, if we say display grid and then we say grid template columns is 1FR, 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 and then grid template rows is 1FR, you're going to see we have three columns now, okay? So that's really cool. Let's give these lists a background color of crimson, and then you'll see a bit more of what I'm doing, okay? So you'll see we have this margin that's making it kind of separate a bit. If we were to get rid of that margin on here, there we go. They're all connected, but that's where grid gap comes in. We can go up here and we can say in our UL that we need a grid gap of 10 pixels, and that's going to create a grid gap of 10 pixels between each of our items. Okay. Next thing you want to do is center these items on in our nav bar. Okay. So let's say justify items is center. And then let's say align items is center. Okay. So I want to explain a few things here because justify items didn't do anything. But if we get rid of that now, justify items, you'll see that does that. Okay. I was, it just didn't save, I guess. Let's just save it at justify items. Okay. Align items didn't do anything. Okay, so justify items is going to center it inside of its container. So these are all centered now in each one of their F one FRs, right? But then it's not centered from top to bottom. And then you might imagine adding align items is going to center it, but it doesn't because the height of these list items or the height of the list itself is not the actual 50 pixels of this row. So what we need to do is we need to go to our UL and say height is 100% of its parent container, which means it's going to be the height of the nav bar, which is the height of the 50 pixels. All right. And I totally understand if that's confusing right now, if you're first learning this. Okay. Now, instead of margin on these list items, let's say padding, and you'll see that when we get more of the background for it, right? Because it adds padding to it. Okay, sweet. So let's go ahead and get rid of this background color crimson. And let's just leave it like that. And then let's go ahead and do this. Let's just put them all to the right here. Okay. What we're going to have to do in nav bar now is create a grid. We'll have to say display is grid. And then we'll have to say grid template rows is 1FR because we only want one row. But then we're going to need some columns, okay? The first one, we want to take up all the items, right? All the space. But then let's say we just want the list to be on the right. Then we can just say we only want it to be like 300 pixels, okay? By default, it's not going to go over there because it doesn't know. We haven't assigned it over there. So what we can do, that's that 300 pixels there, okay? So what we can do is we can go to UL and we can say grid column is two to three. Okay. So that's probably very confusing if you haven't done grid before, but basically what's going on here is this is, this is one. You can imagine this as one and this as two and this as three. We're basically just saying, Hey, UL belongs from two to three, which is where, how we're getting it to go across that 300 pixels. Okay, so kind of familiarize yourself with that idea and leave a comment down below if you want that further explained and I'll make a video on it. Next thing you want to do is just add a margin to our entire nav bar. Let's say margin 40 pixels. And let's make that only on the left and right. So let's say zero 40 pixels. Hmm, that's not working. Uh, let's say padding. There we go, that's better. Now let's say our background color on the UL to blue and just see what that looks like. You'll see now it's centered the way it needs to be. Okay. You'll see that Instagram though is not touching it. Whereas Facebook is touching it. So let's just mess around with this and say, justify self is center on the UL. Okay. You'll see that it centers it, but you might be wondering how the freak does that work? And basically what justify self is doing is it's the same thing as saying justify items on the nav bar. Okay. So if we get rid of that, you'll see it has the same effect. Okay, so that's how you build a very basic nav bar in SCSS and HTML. Now, if you want to see more of this, I'll gladly make more videos. I just wanted to put something up quick tonight that could add a little bit of value to you as a developer. And if none of this makes sense, please leave comments down below and ask me to explain specific things in this. And I definitely will. Okay, so that's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next videos.